Thank you for uh, wanting to interview me. I don't know what I'm going to be able to tell you that'll be of any help, and I hope that this has not gotten to me so late that your assignment already had to be handed in, but I'll tell you any little thing I can. Uh, let me see. Number one is what school education do I have? Um, I'm a little bit unusual in this. Uh, I, I've got graduate school education. I went uh, all the way um, through college. I've got a BA and I have a PhD in German literature. I went to Harvard uh, University, uh, both as an undergraduate and as a graduate student, and my intention was to um, study German and to teach German literature. In fact, I even taught German a little bit, uh, German literature while I was at Harvard. Um, but uh, then I decided to give that up once I got my PhD because I was much more interested in uh, being an actor than I was in, um, in German. And in fact, uh, I've been uh, acting when I, uh, ever since I was in junior high school from the time I was 12 years old. Um, but it was always a hobby, and so I decided uh, late in life to, uh, to let my hobby become my, my profession, and my profession then became my hobby. Uh, was my education, number two, was my education adequate for my present job? <laughs> I don't know when, what's adequate to be an actor. Um, being an actor is very unusual, and, and a lot of people go to all sorts of training schools. They can either study in the university level, or they can go to a conservatory, uh, something like the Juilliard School in New York, or they can go to a, or, or the Yale um, School of Drama, which is really more of a conservatory, or something on like Oberlin. Um, but in a way, it was, my training was adequate because I was acting when I was a kid, and it was a hobby, as I said. And uh, just being on the stage and getting up and doing it and trying to uh, perfect it um, as I as I went along was was very helpful. And uh, eventually, when I went to New York after I decided to become a professional, my my uh, German held me in good stead because my first jobs were all as uh, Germans, and there weren't very many other people who could speak German and could act too. So that's what really got me into the business. And then from there, people saw that I could act, and I got other jobs as well. Um, <clears throat> if this education was not adequate for my job, what's, what's desired? Almost anything can go in this. People can act with no training at all, and people can act with a lot of training. Um, it, a lot of it depends on innate ability, and a lot of it depends, believe it or not, I hate to say it, on luck. Number three, how long have I been in my present job capacity? Well, I've been out in Los Angeles about 15 years. I spent about five, three, four years in, in New York before then. And uh, that's as a professional. Before that, I'd been, uh, I'd been acting professionally occasionally, even while I was in graduate school. There was a group called The Proposition, which was uh, very much like the Second City, and it grew out of, um, out of uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And we had some people like um, the actor Fred Grandy was in the original company with me, and uh, uh, Jane Curtin was in it, and there was some Josh Mustel, some other people like that. So I was acting as a professional, but never really did it as a as a as my one way of uh, earning a living until um, about 18 years ago, uh, 17, 18 years ago. And what additional training other than school did I acquire for the position? Well, as an actor, you really have got to, if you want to be any good, you've got to keep on training. And there are all sorts of different acting classes that one can take and one really should take if you want to become any good at the profession. Even people who've been acting professionally for years and years and years go to class. Um, there are some very famous acting classes. Um, the Actors Studio, for example, was really a place to work out and uh, uh, try things out, but it was a class in many, many respects. And uh, I've gone for many years to a class out here in Los Angeles, and there are a lot of professionals who work in films and television who are in this class. Um, as well. When I first went to New York, I studied for a short while with a man named Robert Neff Williams, who was an extremely good voice teacher. He teaches, um, that's speaking, speech, and he teaches at the Juilliard School. And um, he, I studied with him in order to learn how to place my voice and, and enunciate properly. I didn't have much of an accent. I grew up in, in the Boston area, but I didn't have much of a Massachusetts accent. But it was important for me to learn how to place my voice and breathe properly, and um, that was very helpful. I also took, when I first got to New York, a class in how to audition, which was very helpful in helping me get some of my first jobs. Um, but classes are important all the way until the day you retire or die in this profession, and uh, that's just the way it is, and the very best study constantly. 
my starting salary on my first job. Well, once you get to New York and you and your most of the work is uh, um, if you if it isn't free, where you're doing it for a, uh, a showcase and you want people to see you, um, it's mostly union regulated, and uh, your first job is mostly union scale. Um, for Screen Actors Guild, now that would be in the range of maybe four hundred dollars a day. Um, and that seems like an awful lot, but you've got to remember that it's very, very rare even to get one day's work when you're starting out in this profession. Um, the uh, minimums for the various unions, there's AFTRA for television and uh, Actors Equity for the stage. I think in Canada it's all under AFTRA, and um, whatever the minimum is there is probably the, mi is probably the most that you'll get. Um, Number six, since I first started working in this field, by what percentage has my paycheck increased? Well, it's increased quite considerably. I mean, I, I make a great deal more when I work one day uh, than I ever did before, probably in the range of uh, oh, three to four hundred percent. But um, it, it, that varies. That's a little bit deceptive because um, our wages really are determined by how often we can work, and my income has varied. Uh, it's generally gone up over the years, but sometimes it's gone down. Um, you know, this last year, it was down. So even though I was working a little bit more, it's gone down. Um, and some years, it'll go up. It, it, w our profession, you don't work on a salary the way most people do. Um, uh, you, uh, you take what, uh, what comes through, and sometimes you're very lucky, and uh, good projects that pay a lot of money will, will come your way, and sometimes you are doing a lot of work on projects that can't pay as much. For example, if you're working on a, on a low-budget film, no matter how prestigious it may be, you're only going to be making union scale, whereas you can do uh, one day on a stupid television show, and you can make a great, great deal more than that. Um, I like to go back to the East Coast, and I do theater in the summer, and for that I'm making very, very, very little money. But I do it because I like to, and I think that it's, uh, it's worthwhile to to do theater as well as doing film and television. Uh, I think you can do much more interesting work that way, but you don't get paid as much. And occasionally, um, I'll even work for free in what they call a, uh, a um, workshop production in a 99-seat theater here in, in Los Angeles if I have a chance to play a part that I want to play that no one would necessarily pay me money to do. Uh, I played Shylock in uh, The Merchant of Venice uh, for nothing when somebody asked me to because I wanted to play the part, and I thought it would be very interesting to do. I think there are uh, equivalents like that in Canada. I have a friend who uh, was recently in a production of King Lear in Toronto and played one of the evil sisters, and uh, I believe that she did it for uh, really almost no money at all. It wasn't completely for nothing, but I don't think that she got much more than car fare, and she did it because she wanted to play the part. Let me see. What personal attributes do I feel are necessary for this field of work? You have to have a lot of determination. A lot of people reject you in this job. Um, it, you only see me when I do the work, but you don't see me when I audition. And there are a lot of jobs that I'll audition for that I won't get. There are a lot of good actors out there, a lot of marvelous actors, and some of whom you've probably never seen. And just because you don't see them and they can't get work doesn't mean that they aren't good. There are a lot of very good ones out there. And there are also a lot of very bad ones who are working all the time. So um, you have to be often what they want. You know, not only have to be a good actor, but you've got to be. You've got to look right for the part. You've got to be the right age. Um, you've got to be the right size. If they're trying to pair you up uh, with um, somebody else, you have to match with them. You have to maybe look like this person who's supposed to be your mother or a father. Um, you have to be the same age as the person who's going to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. So uh, there are a lot of things that come into this, and um, persistence is very important. If you don't want, if you don't really care about uh, the job and uh, being an actor, you really should never do it because it's hard. No one will ever tell you that this is easy. No matter how beautiful you may be, it's not an easy job. And you have to really love it. And there are very famous actors out there who suffer a great deal. There, uh, Dustin Hoffman didn't work for years and years in New York. Um, before he got the job in The Graduate. There are some very famous actors out there who, have, who never worked for 10 years, never got one paying job for 10 years before they finally got their first one. They're very famous now. So you've got to be very persistent, and you really have to love it, because otherwise it will be very depressing, and um, it's not worth it unless you really want to do it. If, uh, 
if you're not prepared for the insecurity of never knowing quite what's going to happen next, or having your life revolve about waiting on tables or driving a taxi cab or something else like that, um, then you really should get into something else. And you have to have a lot of talent, and that's very difficult to ascertain. Sometimes you'll, you'll study with a teacher who'll tell you you have a lot of talent and they're stupid and you don't, and sometimes you'll work with someone who tells you you've got, um, you know, you, you've got nothing and uh, they're wrong, and you could be a wonderful, wonderful person. I mean, many people thought that Marilyn Monroe, for example, couldn't act at all, and look at what happened to her. Um, on the other hand, there are some uh, people that are considered the great young fines, and they do one or two movies, and then they disappear, either for want of talent or they burn out. It's a very difficult position. It's a very difficult job to even be successful in, because if you're successful, people People want to know you, that people want to get together with you, that people want to uh, have you your picture in, in newspapers. It, it can go to your head, and a lot of people become uh, really mentally very sick because of that. Uh, a lot of people turn to drink and to drugs because that kind of being in the public spotlight is, it can be very difficult to take. So you have to, you have to really know yourself very well. You've got to have a great deal of inner firmness to, to be able to do this. And you have to want to study and you have to commit yourself to your craft and to your talent and not let anybody get in the way of it, either uh, through making you feel inferior or superior. Let me see. Eight, what are some of the disagreeable aspects of the job or the field of work? <laughs> Rejection is a major one. Um, the business part of the business is not fun at all. Uh, auditioning is no fun. Uh, negotiating for a job is no fun. Having to compete is no fun. Um, going through long periods of time when you don't know, know where your next job will come from or whether you'll ever work again is no fun. Nine, how would you rate the following characteristics in order of importance? Let me see. Attitude, skill, appearance, promptness, cooperation, dependability. Well, skill is definitely at the top. I think that's, and behind that is attitude. You've got to have a very good attitude. In fact, um, the acting teacher that I work with, a um, very good man by the name of Milton Katselis, um, often says that attitude is the most important thing. I think skill is more important, but attitude is right up there. Um, after that, I think uh, dependability and cooperation, maybe in that order, are pretty good. Appearance is, a lot of people will tell you appearance is important, but uh, look, there are an awful lot of people who've made very big names for themselves that look just a mess. Um, you don't have to be absolutely beautiful and be a leading man or a leading lady. You can be a character person as well. Appearance is only, is much less important than people will tell you in this business. And promptness is important, um, but um, it's not by far the most important thing. You're not on a time clock in the same way, although you've got to be relatively prompt, especially on a movie set, because you're wasting the time of many, many, many people if you don't show up on time. And uh, that, if you do that too often, uh, they're not going to hire you again. What particular aspect about my work responsibilities give the most pleasure? I love to act. I absolutely love to act. I, I do the thing that I like to do the most, and that is very gratifying. I have a chance to uh, grow as a person and investigate certain uh, things that I find very interesting, and I like getting up in, in public and uh, and interpreting a role and having people uh, watch it and, and uh, like my work. That's very gratifying. To me. Um, what are my specific duties or areas of responsibility? Well, imagine you say acting, but it involves a lot of things. You have to know your lines. You have to be able to work with other people. Um, you have to be able to read a text properly and really understand what it's trying to say. And then you have to find ways of looking into your own soul to find those emotional moments that will correspond uh, to what the text is trying to say, and then you string them together in such a way that the, uh, the piece makes sense from beginning to end. That's mostly what you do on stage, but to a certain extent you have to do the same thing in film or television as well. Um, and that's very interesting, um, but it takes a lot of work. What do I attribute my business success to? Oh, pure dumb luck. I don't think that's... I'm, I'm pretty determined, but uh, you never know when you're going to be successful in this business. 
What other careers or fields of work can I branch into with this business background now accumulated? Absolutely nothing. There's really not much of anything else you can do as an actor. I mean, a lot of actors can go into politics, but you really should be a politician. I, I, Ronald Reagan aside, I think he was a dreadful politician, but he was rather a good B actor, and he was able to do that sort of thing. But acting is acting. In the theater, you, you, I could probably direct now, and maybe even, maybe write, I don't know, maybe produce, but really acting teaches you to, to act. What advice do I offer as to how about getting employment in this field? Talk to other people. I'm sure that there are professional magazines um, in Canada about uh, the theater, maybe about film. You should read them. I'm sure that uh, if you ever decided to go to Toronto and try and get on the stage or something like that, um, there are people that you could talk to and find out what magazines young aspiring actors would normally read, where they could find out how to find an agent, which is probably very important, as much so in Canada as it is here, uh, to find out who's casting and who's making what movies and who's teaching what classes and who's presenting what play in what theater uh, where someone will come and see your work. And because if they don't see your work, you're never going to have a chance to do it. Uh, acting is definitely a profession of uh, work with other people. It's an ensemble, and you don't, even if you're doing a one-person play, you're not working alone. You have to have a director, you've got to have a theater, you've got to normally have a sets and lights and people running the whole thing. So um, it, it's an ensemble, it's a piece of group work, and you have to find out where to meet these people and how to become involved with the work that they're doing. Any additional information? No. There's really not. If you're very lucky, you'll have support of your family and your friends, and I don't mean just financial support, I mean emotional support. Um, you can do all sorts of things to make sure that you stay on the track, um, keeping yourself in good health and keeping yourself active and aware is important. Uh, I always think that reading is very important. I think that it's terrible that a lot of the actors in this world are... Uh, they're not interested in reading. They're not interested in things about them. The more interested that you are in the things about you and in the world around you, the more you will understand about the world and be able to bring to your job of interpreting the world, which is really what an actor does. So stay active and try and stay happy in it, and I wish you the very best of luck in everything that you may do. Bye-bye.